Do you remember, David, did you used to watch Pop Stars The Rivals? Not really. So on Pop Stars The Rivals, it might have been Pop Stars, they had to sing an a cappella version of Monday, Monday, ba -da -da. Whenever it's any day of the week, I think Wednesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Oh, this is pretty. It's Wednesday. I haven't done any reading, but I've just got home and I have received ooh, a candle with some it's a squirrel. Reading. Yeah, I've received a finished copy. Is this the finished copy? Of the second Fireborn book. Now, I've read the first Fireborn book. Oh, dear. Um, I forgot what it was called, though. The first Fireborn book. I don't know. But this is the second one. There's a launch party, David, on the 30th of September. And it's come with no chocolate, sadly, David. A magnet which has a squirrel on it called Witch. That's quite cute. A beautiful little autumnal leaf. <laughs> a little thing says, I pledge my life to the hunting lodge. I vow to serve all seven clans as my own. I protect them from what lies beyond. I forsake all blood ties and blood feuds to offer up my name and my past. Oh, that made me jump. <laughs> the hunters are my family now and always. I swear before them that I'll never lower my weapons in the face of darkness, not allow tyranny to rise. And smell no. this. This little candle smells lovely. What a whiff. I mean, it's a bit bathroomy. Mm, that is nice, but yes, bathroomy. Um, so yeah, so here is the second Fireborn book by Ashling Fowler. I am going to tell you what the first one's called because I can't bloody think of what it's called. This is called Twelve in the Frozen Forest. It's not giving away anything. What the first one's called? Why won't it tell me? Why won't it tell me? Oh, maybe this is a first one. I thought this was the... I don't think it is. Oh, I'm thinking of something completely different. Well, this is exciting then, because also, on the press release, it says that Ashley Fowler's favourite monster hunters, the first one, Buffy Summers, yes, please. I'm going to read this. This sounds exciting. Twelve has spoken the pledge, and now she is a huntling. She has given up her name to train in the art of fighting monsters and keeping the peace and she won't get to choose a new one until she's earned it. But when the lodge's walls are breached for the first time and a little girl is taken, Twelve is the only one interested in going after a child. Teaming up with Dog, the stone guardian of the lodge, she soon ends up on a quest that will change her life, her name and her entire world. Set in the snowy northern forest of an imagined prehistoric world, Fireborn is a breathtaking debut. It turns exciting, funny and heart-wrenchingly sad. It marks the introduction of an unstoppable new fantasy trilogy. What on earth was I thinking of that I've read the first one of those then? Maybe it's this font that's made me follow it. Anyway, that's exciting, isn't it? A new middle grade out just in time for Christmas. When does this come out? This would be a great Christmas present. The 30th of September, I saw when the launch party was. Oh, very exciting. I don't know if I'll get to read it this month, but I'll certainly add it in. And like I said, a little bathroom, bathroom scented uh, candle. Very exciting. Anyway, that's that for, uh, for Wednesday in terms of reading. Um, I'm just home from work and look at this little baby. We're playing badminton tonight. That's what this big bag of rackets is behind me. And um, yeah, I'm going to keep this for Christmas as well so I can wrap up some Christmas stuff. What do you think, Minnie? What do you think? What do you think? Little to no interest, I would say. Um, yeah, happy Wednesday. Welcome to the vlog. Welcome to the last vlog of September, the last reading vlog week of September. Oh, hi. Ooh, that's far too high. Let's get a bit down, get deeper and down, get down, get deeper and down. Saturday night, Spice Girls album track. It's not quite down enough. There we go. There we go. Um, it's Thursday. I'm all done up in my blue. Blue top, blue nails, blue eyeliner, little blue earrings because I'm about to film, it's going to take me forever, the... Blue, she blue books on my shelves. These span, I've got more blue books than I've got anything else. Blue goes from here, da -da 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 -da, all the way back down to here. So it's almost like a whole shelf thing. So when I film these, I've made a few of these, um, but when I film these ones, I like to wear the color that I'm going to be talking about. I thought it would give me an opportunity to put this one of my favorite dresses of all time on. Um, it's Thursday. I was working from home today and I finished work for the day. Um, no reading has been done today. 
because of the aforementioned working from home. However, David's out tonight with um, some work pals for his birthday drinks. Um, so I probably will crack on with Catch the Rabbit. I've got less than 100 pages of Catch the Rabbit left. There's a chance I could finish it. I am looking forward to having a bath. And I'm also um, very much invested in uh, watching Neighbours Twice a Day by Josh Widdicombe, um, the audiobook of that. Um, and yeah, I think um, there's a, well, I've got four hours, 17 minutes of that left, so that's probably not gonna be finished. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. It's very niche, very niche sort of like, if you are Josh's age, and I think I'm just a little bit younger than Josh, um, and you used to watch a lot of telly in the 90s, as I did, um, then you'll really enjoy it. And it's sort of like, I, I enjoy these memoirs told in like an unusual way. So like a memoir told through telly. I mean, the majority of the book is about telly. Anyway. A book arrived in the post today and also I thought I would take this opportunity to show you my paper gang because I know you guys love stationery as much as I do so I thought I'd show you that as well. This is actually August paper gang. I don't know if you know but in the UK due to Brexit, I roll. The eye roll of someone who voted against Brexit and is now living with the consequences. Oh, a mere few years after it happened. Um, there's a shortage of uh, lorry drivers in the country, which means that there's a shortage of a lot of stuff in the country, um, including which, my stationery. I mean, not the most important thing. Should we open this one first, actually? Um, so yeah, so that has taken this, oh, that's the second month in a row that's done. So, so long has this taken, I've actually, oh, that is so annoying. That's, so I've pulled off those, or both ones, and they're not gonna do it. Um, the September box has arrived before the August box. So yeah, I subscribe to Paper Gang. This looks very nice actually this month. Um, I've got it for friends in the past for Christmas and birthdays and stuff and I just thought I'd like some. So yeah, here we are. So this month it is this sort of pattern. I like these because these are very helpful for when my niece comes. Oh no, there's no colouring on this one. Oh, that's a shame. Right, who is the artist? Mouse House. Oh, it looks like it's going to be very nice. Very sort of muted tones, but it looks nice. Right, let's open this little page there. What have we got? Oh, nice. Oh, nice pens. Oh, it looks nice. So we've got a planner. This is a very nice planner. All of these planners. So this has actually got less pages in than the other planners. They are getting cheekier and cheekier. This is um, a planner and in it, every page says, today's objectives, to-do, timetable, key tasks, um, notes and doodles um, with this lovely, that is lovely. Now, I don't know whether to give this one to my mum. Maybe she'd prefer this one than the one I had earmarked for her. Because occasionally, sort of every sort of three or four months, we get one of these planners and I can't get through them quick enough. Um, and the last one I've got is like a tie-dye one. I think my mum might enjoy this sort of like, scape more so i think i'll probably give her that instead so well done she's benefited then i've got these like little reading things that i always say oh they're really helpful these little like stickies particularly uh, if you're revising or something and i always think i'll use those when i'm reading for points that i want to tab and i never do two things so far that i'm not going to use <laughs> no, that's not true some lovely cards lovely cards happy birthday Happy B Day, these are gorgeous. Choose Happy with really, really, really nice envelopes that go with them. I don't know if you saw those. So those, those are all lovely. Then some really nice looking pens. I'm gonna be bang into these pens like, oh they're, oh, they're felt tips. So maybe I won't be as bang into them as I thought. But I'll still use them. They'll come in very handy. I, I wrap everything, it's actually David's birthday this weekend, and I wrap everything in brown paper and decorate the brown paper. So I will use these to decorate the brown paper. I haven't got in my birthday card yet either, so that might be that. And then, these a very nice little print that says life is short and the world is wide that's nice as well isn't it very sort of like mid, like almost like desert type colors unusual so there we go so that's my paper game for this month um and then here we go a book that arrived in the post i don't know where it's from oh my god this has excited me so much oh my god i can't believe this i did not know this was coming HarperCollins have sent me this. Oh, this is a 50th 
anniversary edition of when Hitler stole Pink Rabbit, which is a book. This is so bizarre. I got, I, I read this. I know this is one of Jen's favorite books and I read it off of Jen's recommendation. Um, I got a copy out from the library and I think I put a copy on, um, on my Christmas list last year and I didn't get one. And then when I was in the library the other day with my niece, um, I saw a paperback version of this and it thought, I thought I must buy myself a copy of When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit because I enjoyed it so much. And look, a copy has arrived for me. Oh, this is such an amazing... So Judith Kerr is a very well-renowned and um, loved uh, children's author in the UK. Um, and this is her um, autobiographical uh, book. Like, well, it's based on her, except the character is called Anna and her name is Judith, about um, when she's living in Germany in 1933. And... Um, one day her and her family are rushed out of Germany um, and her sort of life after that all told from a children's perspective. It is so beautiful and cosy and sort of like warming in a way that a child having to evacuate her home country um, so that she, her and her family don't get killed by <laughs> a world leader shouldn't be but it is. Oh this is just so beautiful. Oh my god and underneath it's light blue and it's got this gold it's got paris in gold oh god it's gorgeous that is absolutely beautiful oh that's really 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 made my day that has oh god i just sort of want to drop everything and read this but i can't i've got book club books coming out of my ear, ear rolls but yeah oh god that's made my day that's really cheered me so there we go that can go up there in my sort of hopeful will i get to this this month pile but maybe i'll get to it next month Oh, lovely. I might read it in November, actually, as a sort of birthday treat. Um, so, yeah, there we go. Anyway, I better um, tidy up this mess and uh, get filming my blue books. But, yeah, I'll let you know if I finish any of my books by the end of the day. I will, I promise. Happy weekend. Happy Friday. Friday, friends. Pajamas are on. It is the first day of David's birthday weekend. David and I are both off work on Monday, which is lovely. Um, and tonight for birthday weekend, because I like to, David and I really like to extend our birthdays. So tonight is telly night. We've already watched Taskmaster. We've got RuPaul's Drag Race UK to watch, Gogglebox, and then there is a Graham Norton James Bond special on later as well. So that is the plans for this evening before we go into tomorrow where we're doing a few celebrations with my family in the evening um, but i just wanted to check in to let you know just had a lovely bath with a lovely bath bomb a little moo cow that was all like rainbow colored and i finished catch the rabbit by lana baz tazik um i was reading this i mean i got sent the proof of this um earlier this year it came out in may earlier this year um and um, i was reading this as part of the reading women challenge this was um prompt two i believe um which is uh, a read a um a book from a eastern european um author in translation and this is from uh, this is from La uh, Lana Baz Tazik, who uh, was born in the former Yugoslavia and translated by the author. I didn't love it. I gave it two stars, and I'll tell you for why. On here, and I promise this didn't influence my decision, although it's spread right across the front of the page. But I, I can see why this is the case. Lewis Carroll meets Eleanor Ferrante in a balkanized wonderland. Um, so this is a book about two um, sort of former school friends who um, had a very sort of like sort of power play relationship as children and a friendship that I wouldn't probably describe as a friendship it just seemed a bit bizarre and the friendship very much reminded me of the friendship in um, My Brilliant Friend by Eleanor Ferrante which is a hugely popular book and a book that I do not like um, and I've made a video about it when I read it and I said I did like it Oh, she got some backlash off the back of that. So yeah, that's probably part of the reason I didn't like this book because there were parts of it when I was reading it and I was like, oh my God, that's really beautifully written and that really, that's really beautifully brought across. But yeah, I think it was too much like My Brilliant Friend, which I didn't enjoy. Um, and also I think I struggle with books where I just don't like anyone. It used to be the case where um, when I was reading a book, if I didn't get on with any of the characters, that didn't always impact on my enjoyment of the book. But definitely as I've got older um, or, or maybe more settled into my reading, I need to sort of at least be enjoying sort of one person in the book. And that was not the case for any of this. So that's that. I finished it. I gave it two stars in the bath. Now I'm out of the bath. David's about to get into the bath and I'm making for dinner out of David's twisted a cookbook 
Um, this is bold, unserious, delicious food for every occasion. Um, and it is like, it's, it's a very beautifully pulled together cookbook actually. They've got some really, really nice cool stuff in here. Baked tartiflette gnocchi. There's a meat-free section at the beginning, I believe. Meat-free month. Oh no, maybe it's after occasions. Um, all sorts. And tonight we're having Philippe Dubois. I don't know who he is. Philippe Dubois was an unassuming and decidedly un-French calf in Birmingham, England that specialised in progressive baguette fillings. We like baguettes. And I went to the post office earlier and on the way back I stopped at the co-op and bought this massive baguette. So we're going to have chicken tikka baguette, but instead of using chicken, because oh, I'm a vegetarian, we're going to use, and if you haven't tried this yet as a vegetarian or even as a meat eater, I would highly, highly recommend, oh God, it's wet. You get your mitts on, some what the cluck. I'm just having a look to check that this hasn't got out of date because it's been a while since I, what's the date on the old what the, there is no date on the what the cluck. Who knows what the date is? I'm sure it'll be fun. David, they don't have any um, expiry dates on the what the cluck. It lasts forever. Well, I, hope, I know it doesn't will last forever. I'm sure it will be fine. I only got it in the shopping on Monday. That's really blown my mind that they don't have that. Anyway, What the Cluck by the Vegetarian Butcher. We haven't tried anything else by this range, but the, the actual fake chicken of this, bear in mind I haven't eaten chicken for like seven or eight years. It tastes very much like what I imagine chicken was. What it reminds me of, which is a bit weird because like for me to remind, be more reminded of like meat in my mouth. But when I used to have turkey Christmas dinner, the brown meat, that's what that reminds me of. But it's, oh, here we go. Used by the 8th of October. We're fine. Don't worry. You can stand down. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to make the chicken tikka baguette um, gear that goes around it and then have it with this. So if that's on the menu for tonight. I'm going to get on with that. Oh, I've left my phone in the other room. I think I'm going to listen to, David and I have both been quite enjoying listening to um, the Josh Widdicombe book together. So I'm gonna finish off the Phil Wang book, um, which I mentioned last time. He, Phil Wang is a comedian, um, Malaysian, Chinese, English comedian. Um, and this book is a funny sort of memoir. I love these sort of, all these different memoirs told from different perspectives, like different um, sort of ways to do it. Um, and Phil's is told um, through what it's like to be um, half Malaysian Chinese and half English. Um, and yeah, and we've now just got onto the section. So it's been done in all sorts of different sections like love, um, uh, food, uh, culture. I'm on home now. Um, and yeah, I think I'm going to finish that. It's 43 minutes I've got left. Maybe, it'll, maybe I won't finish it, but like that's what I'm going to do while I'm making Philip Dubois chicken tikka baguettes. But actually, it's not chicken tikka because I've got a korma curry paste, a Jamie Oliver korma curry paste that I thought I'd use tonight just to save a bit of time. Bear in mind, it's 20 to 8 um, rather than make the paste so that'll be nice so yeah go and put this book um, away and crack on with my cooking hope you're all right probably see you tomorrow bye oh Saturday shuffling in and um, we're going to my sister's tonight for David and my mum's birthday. I'm just wrapping up. This is what my mum and dad have got David for his birthday. Good, isn't it? I had to buy it and then wrap it up. Now it's Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury for the Switch. So, but I thought I'd just come in and check in, not just to tell you about Bowser's Fury, but to tell you I finished Phil Wang's autobiography memoir. What is the difference between an autobiography and a memoir? I genuinely do not know. Um, I finished it this morning and um, yeah, whilst um, there was sort of like element, because Phil Wang is a comedian. I've told you many times what it's about, so I'm not gonna go into detail about it. Phil Wang is a comedian, but what I will say about this is that it wasn't sort of like heavy on the jokes, which I didn't mind because I actually found the subject matter of being from two places um, very interesting. But yeah, I think if you were going in thinking, oh, British comedian, this is gonna be a low fest then maybe you'd be a bit disappointed. However, the front cover doesn't really scream lolfest, does it? It's quite a solemn photo of uh, Phil. But yeah, so I finished that. And then I am hanging on to a credit on Audible because David and I are going on holiday soon before my next credit comes in. And we want to listen to the audiobook of another British comedian. Bob Mortimer, we want to listen to that. So I've hung on to that. So I went on to my Libby app to see, first of all, if my Bob Mortimer autobiography had come in, um, but it hadn't, it's got six weeks on, so I think I'm gonna have to buy it on, um, I think I'm gonna have to buy it on Audible. 
So I thought, what was available? And um, I think, well, the two books I've downloaded from Libby are both rereads of mine. And the first one is um, Binti by Nedi Okorafor, which I read, it's a novella. It's only two and a half hours long. It's a sci-fi novella. And if I remember rightly, it's about her going to a new, uh, like a sort of space school or like a school in space. Um, Binti herself. And then I believe there's something to do with like I think it's to do with saving the race of her people. Um, don't come in here, David, I'm wrapping things. Um, so yeah, so I downloaded that and that's what I started listening to. But I've also downloaded Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadina Veristo, which is a book I read last year. I read it in March last year because I remember reading it when we were on holiday in Centre Parts before the pandemic started. And I really, really enjoyed it and I always said I wanted to revisit it. So um, as that was there on Libby, I've um, downloaded that and I think maybe I'll start listening to that once I've listen to Binti. Anyway, I better write in Minnie's card to David. Happy birthday, Daddy. Love you. That's cute, isn't it? Um, and then I've got to wrap my mother's presents. I've got my mum a sweet apple candle, which I don't like the scent of, but she likes apple scent and she'll really like it also. She'll really like this. This is from TK Maxx, the home of candles. Um, like embossed glass jar. Isn't that nice? Um, I got a top from Joni which is just a long sleeve stripy top with a little horseshoe on it. I've got a, uh, the sweet roasting tin. God, that hurt my arms even to lean over. And then I've got a planner. Um, mm. And then I'm going to, I think we're gonna do a Jamie Oliver cookery lesson online together. I think it's the last thing I'm gonna do. So I need to make her a little token for that. So yeah, that's that. I think I'm gonna pop my audio book back on. Writing all my cards and wrap my presents. And then I think we might be hang heading around to my sister's. I feel like I might be a bit hot in this top though. I've got this top on. I mean, it's September. I'd like to be wearing... This is a light long sleeve top. I'd like to be wearing long sleeve tops. Um, but yeah. Let's see if I stay hot in it. I really like this sort of ruching across the front as well. Anyway, I'm going to crack on. I'll see you all soon. Bye. I'm all over the place and I can't remember the last time I wrapped up and what I wrapped up. So I might miss a book or two here hopefully I won't um it's Tuesday it's the last day oh, of um of the reading vlog in fact of the reading vlog of September isn't it just making myself a cup of tea I don't know if I've shown you my cup I might be going mad I feel like I've gone because this goes throughout I don't know what's going out up and before I also have my Patreon live show last night anyway look I've got this gorgeous new Emma Bridgewater mug that's got all fireworks on it i bought david i've just taken it into him he's in the bath um the halloween one well autumnal anyway it's tuesday as i said i'm back from work um i have got i've pulled something in my back i think i did it when i've been list, lifting my niece i'm very guilty of sort of like being at an angle and i don't know how these mothers escape child like having children without pulling backs because i've did it with a toddler before being at this angle, picking up baby, feeling something going in my back and then just having to live with the consequences. Went for a run on Saturday, which probably wasn't wise. There's so many crane flies, or as we call them here, daddy long legs. Let me tell you two terrible stories of the deaths of daddy long legs. Number one is I was in the bath the other night, all candles on, and I heard some sort of like crackling and fizzing. I thought, what is that? I haven't got a crackly, fizzy candle. It was a crane fly thrown, in, thrown into there and then burnt to death. This morning I was in the shower, crane fly up the top of the shower, I thought, that crane fly's not going to bother me. I'll leave it there. Um, and then during the shower, sort of started flying. And I thought, don't fly. You're going to get wet. You're going to get on the water. It flew into the water. I couldn't find it anywhere. I hadn't gone down the drain plug. I couldn't find it anywhere. Anyway, <laughs> I went, <laughs> I used my flannel to wash my face and just smushed crane fly all around my face. So, horrific. But you're here for the reading. So, I have finished... And I think I've spoken about Phil Wang's book plenty of times, so I'm not going to talk about that. I finished Phil Wang's book, Side Splitter. I'm sure I've spoken about that. Um, I've also, today, no, yesterday I finished Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. I've actually got that book somewhere. That was from my Patreon book club. Very, very enjoyable book. I read that very quickly in sort of two days. I gave it three to three, to three and a half stars. 3.25 stars, people might say. YA book about Felix, who... Um, is a trans uh, male uh, teenager um, and sort of coming to terms with um, his identity and also sort of not wanting to commit to a male um, sort of label. It's all a lot in there about labels and identity, but also stuff in there about family and about wealth and about friendship and about love. Um, and yeah, a very, very interesting chat that we had last night. So I enjoyed that very much. 
Then today I've finished Binti, which didn't take me very long at all. Uh, Binti is a novella, a sci-fi novella, um, written by Nyedi Okorafor, which I've read before, but this time I saw it was available in my library, um, literally ready to go. And I thought, well, I'll listen to the audiobook of that. I remember the first time around when I read it, really, really enjoying it. But this time around, listening to it, and it's just over two hours long, so it is not a long thing at all. And I think maybe this lends to what I'm about to say. The pacing was just mental, like literally, nothing's happening, she's going to university, so it's about a, a girl, a human girl, um, going to university at another planet called the Uz, Uzma planet, I think, U Uzma University, and um, sort of being attacked by another race of, um, well, I believe aliens. Um, and yeah, just sort of like, nothing's happening, loads is happening, nothing's happening, loads is happening, and yeah, it just, yeah, I just, I felt a bit confused by the whole thing, to be honest. Um, and then I just started listening to Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, which was also available on my library app. Um, and uh, yeah, I read that last year. Actually, in March last year, it was one of the last books I read before pandemic hit, because I remember I was reading it when we were in um, Centre Parks, and that was where we were the week before the pandemic hit. Um, and yeah, I always said I wanted to revisit it as a audiobook and uh, it was available there, so I thought, let's do it. So I literally have just started listening to that, I'm 1% in. Um, but also I started, speaking of Bernadine Everisto, she does the foreword to this book. Um, this is Black Teacher by Ber Beryl Gilroy. This is a um, non-fiction book. Um, it's a republished book. So this is Beryl's memoir about um, being a black teacher in um, London um, in the 60s. Um, and it was first published in 1976, reprinted again in 1994, and then this is the new edition with the foreword by Bernadine Evaristo. And yeah, I mean, I'm only two chapters in, but sort of like, she's a head teacher, and what it's like to sort of be black and be a head teacher in the 60s, uh, in 1969, and I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. I literally have not lent much time to it. I read a few pages on my lunch today, and I read a little bit before I went to bed last night, so I'll be reading more of that. Um, it's Tuesday, as I said, tonight, it is, oh I've put them over there, let me, come, let me go and get them. It's Bake Off night and it's biscuit week and I was going to make some biscuits and I thought fuck it, I've got to edit this when I get home. I want to have a bath, I've got to wash my hair, so I bought these in Sainsbury's, two seconds. A border classic recipe sharing pack of biscuits. In this packet of biscuits there are light and chocolatey Viennese whirls, sweet memories butterscotch crunch, light and buttery shortbread rings, chocolate oat crumbles, buttery sultana melts and divinely chocolate cookies. That is an amazing, the only thing I could ask for a little bit is maybe a ginger biscuit in there, but yeah. So I bought those for me and David to enjoy. And then for dinner tonight, we're having out of the Green Bible. Actually, this is the first, this is, I've never, this hasn't happened in a long time. So this is the Green Rotin Tin, or the Green Bible as I just called it, which is the cookbook that I use the most. I mean, it's, it's actually getting to the point where this cookbook is falling to bits now. But we're having something which we haven't cooked before, and that's uh, stuffed roasted fennel and mushrooms with Gruyere, because I got, um, some fennel in a veg box that I have subscribed to. David and I are now getting local veg sent to us, a small box sent to us once a week uh, for the princely sum of £11. There was loads in there. I actually, the, the first one I had was 50% off, so it's £5.50. And I got loads of stuff in there. So, um, yeah, don't know what's coming this week, but last week we got this. So I said to David, find something in the cookbook that has um, fennel in it. And he did. So, yeah, I'm about to cook that and listen to Girl, Woman, Other. And, yeah, I'm going to get in the bath, wash my hair. Have a cosy night. So thanks for sticking by for the reading vlogs. It's been very enjoyable. And I guess I'll see you all again soon for another butcher video.